Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you today is a distance calculation rig. This can be used in any parameter that requires some kind of distance calculation like detail or brightness values or whatever. In this example that I've got, I've got this crack texture. You can see the forward facing sphere has crack detail on it. But as you look back, the ones in the back, the cracks are dissipating. And that just has to do with perspective. But you want to be able to see those cracks. What we can do is we can apply a gradient based off of the distance and brighten up those back rear-ended spheres. So that's what this distance calculation node rig does. So it's it's actually a really simple setup. I'll show you how it works. You're going to see here that the cracks are the same in the front, but as it goes back, they're actually getting darker and darker and darker, and you can actually make out the detail in the furthest sections within these spheres. It applies a gradient and increases the value of the bump and black and white values of these cracks going back into space. So let's see how this is built. Here's the example texture that I'm going to be working off of. It's just a standard material that I made the texture white and it's got a tile bump map set 1.25 and you can see here we have the same problem. We can see the pattern is dark here and as it goes back it dissipates and turns into kind of just a noise. So let's build this distance shader. So what we do is we start off with making a state and this has a bunch of outputs to it. You can go through and look at the documentation. It has a bunch of properties that we can export. The one we're going to be working with is this ray length. This ray length shoots out from the camera a ray and gives a gradient. Well, this is in values that are not visible. Like if I just plug this directly in, you won't see any change. It's not visible because it's using a float value and it's infinitesimal small decimals. So we need to clamp it. So I'm going to do a ray change range. So we're going to do the value change range, not the color change range. We're going to plug in ray length into the input, and then we'll need to remap this into a ramp. We'll bring in the alt input. So I'm going to hold down control and click the dot, bring it in, and we'll plug in the base channel and nothing happens. And the reason being is we need to set the distance values that we're going to be calculating. Right now we're doing zero to one. So we want to set this to something like maybe 150 and 500. And you can see the forward facing uh, forward position spheres are black and the back are white. So that's based off of this gradient right here. So if I change this color to like green or red, it will remap it. Let's go ahead and plug in these values. But before I do that, I want to be able to get a visual feedback back of where the end part is and the forward facing forward position values are. So I'm going to move these over. I'm going to set the furthest value. I'm going to add a point here and we'll make this one red and we'll make this close one green. And then the black value here, we're going to set to 1%. And the last one here, we're going to set to 99. So basically the last percent and the first percent is going to give us that feedback. So you can see our distance is actually set too close. So I can take this value. There we go. And then our, our forward facing ones can be brought back a little bit. So I'm going to bring that to where they pop. And this is basically our checker. So we're going to keep this, but then we're going to make another ramp that allows us to actually just shoot a black and white gradient. I'm going to call this one checker. Let's go ahead and plug these values into a value node. So I'm going to say value and we're going to zoom out here so I can see these up here. I'm going to duplicate this four times. I'm going to make these a red color because the nodes that I change frequently I like to make red and our first one is going to be near far min max and we're going to take these and plug them in so near far min max so we'll set these to first one we'll change the we'll change both of these to floats and floats to integers so these first two are floats we changed them to integers because we're doing whole numbers here and do 250 and 500 and we'll set our float value to end on one so then we can come in here and change these values to be correct. So boom. We want to see that last one turn red. There we go. So these values are going to be set to zero and one and one. And then these values are going to be your whole numbers that clip the ranges. Is I want to take this, group these together. So I'll right click and say group in nodes. And I'll rename this to Mist Calc. Give it in color. I like using this number 220, 100, 100. And what we want to do is we want those values that we put in, those red value nodes. We want to expose these on the root here. So when we select this, we can see the values. So what we'll do is we'll just take and start at the top, click and drag and say add new input, add new input, add new input, add new input. 
So now if I go back out by clicking the top here and I reselect this node, you can see we have one called input with those values. So the checker we did has these colors. We're going to keep this, but we want a straight solid black to white gradient. So I'll come in here and say ramp and I'll call this ramp mask. And this is going to be the active mask here. And we're, since we are going to be coming in here and adjusting these values, the min and the max values, we don't want those being affected. See, if I affect this and I put this to like 0.5, you can see it's only a 50%, so it, it reduced this distance. We don't want it affecting the color checker. So what we want to do is we're going to take our change range and duplicate it. And this one here will get range min, range max, these values are not going to be changed and we want to go into the alt input so command click and then where input comes from the ray length so this these two are almost identical the only thing is we're not plugging in the one to zero values and then i actually have this switched so let's switch the gradients here and then our mask yeah so then we're going to take this and add this to the new output and this one here we're going to call bump or um, sorry mask and this first one is going to be checker because we don't want the checker to be affected by that value that we change these now the last step in the mask you might want to do a custom color here so what we'll do is we'll expose the first point of this gradient so i'll click command click there we go sometimes it takes a second and then command click the last one so not one and not two so not one is black and the second one's white so if i come in here and i type in value you can see that there's this color node and it looks almost the same the only problem is if you use this it won't allow you to input these i mean you can plug it in but it'll glitch out i have no idea why that is the case um, so you can't use that. So what we're going to use is we're going to use just one of these values, steal from it. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll change this to color. Our first one is black. So I'll set this to black and white. So this one's black and then this one's white. So I'll say color min, color max. Plug it into the first one, plug into the second one. And then we'll also drag this in to new input, new input. And now you can see we've got the adjustable color. And so now if I want to plug this mask into the bump value, I'll disable the checker because we know it's set up properly. And I go in here, you can see that the front is being masked and the back gets darker. So in order to fix that, all we do is instead of having the min value at zero, we can say like 0.2 and the back seem pretty dark. So we'll say the bump max value is going to be 0.6. And now you can see we have even consistency among the bump from the front to the back. So remember, there's a gradient. And if you need to check it and adjust values or adjust the camera or distances or whatever, you can just bring the texture from the checker into the base color or the luminance color, doesn't matter. And so there it is. We have a checker distance calculation node and that's it. So the last step, you wanna save this for other projects. You select it and go to assets and say convert to asset. And then once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to create a, a folder called like your tools or something like that. Like I have here called Eric's tools and I save my node presets into it. If I select Eric's tools, say okay and then give it a name like distance calc and then hit okay it'll convert it and then if you want to re-edit it what you need to do is reselect it and then say edit asset group and that'll allow you to go back inside of it because it, what it does is it will lock it and not allow you to go inside to make changes so that's it i hope you found this useful thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content thanks for your support